Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the regular standing uh, commission meeting for the Clean Pittsburgh Commission of the City of Pittsburgh. It is uh, November 9th, 2023. My name is Lori Beth. My pronouns are she, hers, and I am the co-chair of the Clean Pittsburgh Commission at this time. Uh, we do have a quorum to conduct business for the commission today, and we're all happy uh, to have you here with us. Um, we'll start uh, the meeting as usual with our uh, member introductions, which I already did mine, and I always go up next to my co-chair, Christopher. Hi, I'm Christopher Mitchell. I am anti-litter specialist for the city of Pittsburgh and co-chair of the Clean Pittsburgh Commission. Uh, I will turn it over to uh, Josh and Aaron. Hi, everybody. Aaron Tobin. I'm with the Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy and live on uh, the north side in Spring Hill. So I, I'm pretty sure I'm the district one rep for the Clean Pittsburgh Commission. Josh? Um, Joshua Schooneman. I'm with Pennsylvania Resources Council. I'm the collection events manager there. We work with the city of Pittsburgh to provide disposal services for many of the items that you can't throw out in your curbside trash, like electronics and air conditioners and hazardous waste. Um, and then I will send it over to my colleague, uh, Sarah Shea. Hello, everybody. I'm Sarah Shea. I'm the deputy director with the Pennsylvania Resources Council. Um, I'm not sure who was already gone because I just dropped in. Um, so who's next? Chris or Lori Beth? I'll let you lead. Let's do Myrna's next to you on my screen. So let's go to Myrna. I'm Myrna Newman. I'm the executive director of Allegheny Cleanways, a resident of Polish Hill. And um, be her pronouns. I think that covers everything. And I will send it to uh, uh, Debbie. Is there a Debbie? Yeah, Debbie. Thanks. Good morning. Debbie Steinberg, uh, sustainability manager with Carnegie Mellon University. University Rep. I live in Squirrel Hill. And that's it. Uh, pass it to Jeff. Good morning, everybody. I am, I believe, a guest of yours today. I was invited by Christopher Mitchell. Um, I am the founder and CEO of Literati, uh, and we have been working with your uh, commission for the past couple of years. Uh, and I'm here to listen and, and hopefully answer any questions that you have. I will pass it to Alexander Fisher. So Alex is our city of Pittsburgh um, tech staff to make sure that we're live on the internet. Um, thank you so much, Jeff. I think uh, we just have want to hear from Giselle this morning. Hey, everybody. My name is Giselle. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm with the Office of Management and Budget, but formally from the mayor's office. Um, and thanks for having me here. Awesome. Good work, everyone. Uh, we are. I'm going to read to you. Um, from our, we like to review uh, seg segments of our bylaws and mission at every meeting so that we can all have the top of mind awareness of why we're all here um, doing this work that does and doesn't relate to our other work that we do in the world. Um, I live in Crafton Heights. I'm just a resident. Yay. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and share um, our meeting agenda today um, while I read to you. Um, the meeting agenda is in your email, um, but also I'm going to show this to you so that we can have it ready for approval in a few minutes, but I'm not going to read it to you because I'm going to read you something different. That makes sense, right? We're on the same page. Uh, okay, um, I want to read um, from our value statement. Um, this month, we try to kind of go through uh, and get everything in every few months through all of this. So um, I'm going to talk today about capacity building and teamwork because that's on my heart right now. Um, the Clean Pittsburgh Commission acknowledges its partnerships with individuals 
businesses, organizations, schools, and the city of Pittsburgh as essential to address community needs. Further underlining its held value for community, the commission expands capacity in imaginative and collaborative ways. The commission recognizes that making expectations and vulnerabilities transparent creates opportunities for clear communication and more thoughtful implementation of programming. Uh, that is that. I'm so sorry, my cat is a demon today and has knocked down like four things since we started. And I apologize. That one was breakable. Uh, okay. Um, so now on your screen, of course, is um, <laughs> the agenda for today's meeting. Um, outside of uh, having some number problems with the list. Good job formatting uh, Microsoft Word. Um, I, uh, if anyone has any questions, additions, deletions um, to uh, this agenda, otherwise we can um, motion to approve. Um, my only concern at this point is that Erica is unable to join us today. And I think we'll be providing some minutes here um, for approval via email in the upcoming weeks. So if anyone else has any um, questions, comments, concerns regarding the agenda at this time, otherwise I will accept a motion to approve and we can move forward. Yeah, motion to approve. Again, Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, okay, well, that just hops us right on down to talking about our um, annual mayor's meeting, which is scheduled uh, now for the month of December. And Chris has been taking care of that. So without further ado, we'll just go over and hear um, about that from Chris. We'll keep this real quick um, because we'll need to have a strategy planning session before our December uh, 14th. Uh, it is going to be in the afternoon at 2.15 in the mayor's office. Um, we will also have a Teams meeting set up. So if you aren't able to join us uh, there in the office, you can join us online. Uh, I believe we had talked previously about wanting to focus uh, uh, asking the mayor for more resources on the issue of curbside enforcement and pickup, specifically with the goal to uh, go weekly on recycling, because we find that going by bi our biweekly recycling leads to a lot of confusion, which leads to a lot of people putting out on the wrong week, which means it could sit there for much longer than it should and cause a lot of litter. And um, we'll have a, uh, an email going out fairly shortly to find some time before December 14th for everyone to uh, collaborate on exactly what we want to say. Also, before the December meeting with the mayor, we did not have a year in review report made up for 2022. And so we'll want to make that up um, this year for both 2022 and we're pretty much at the end of 2023. So we may as well get both of those out of the way since we're meeting with him so late in the year. So if anybody wants to help one in planning, the, the mayor's meeting on what our agenda will be, and two, writing up those reports for the past two years. Um, we'll, we'll send it out in an email and have a, a subcommittee meeting on that. But um, yeah, everyone's welcome. We're excited to see everybody in person again. Any questions before we move on? Excellent. Beautiful. Uh, so, bum, ba, da, 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 da. watch your emails for that and for um, those minutes coming out. And uh, well, heck, Jeff, you're up um, to tell us all about everything uh, new in the world of literati. Thanks so much for coming out today. You are welcome, Lori. And I need more introductions where it starts with, well, heck, Jeff, it's time for you. I don't get those every day. Uh, hey, everyone. It is nice to meet you. Thank you for uh, inviting me to join along. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Literati, uh, we are on a mission to eradicate litter. And we have built a technology platform that allows anybody to download an app, iOS or Android, and photograph pieces of litter that they see. That photograph holds quite a bit of data. Essentially, you can identify who is picking up what 
where and when every photograph has a timestamp and a geotag. And we've built a suite of computer vision models, these different types of image recognition models that can look at that photograph and say, all right, what's the material? What's the object? What's the brand? And when you collect all that data in aggregate and at scale, it can provide for pretty interesting insight. When Christopher and I first met two years ago, um, we talked about some of the struggles and challenges that the city of Pittsburgh was having, which are the same as pretty much every other municipality in the world. Uh, and we talked about um, the idea of engaging the community. And so for the last two years, we've run uh, this collaboration with a program we have called Engage, which is all about getting people out to participate in the greater good. And so um, that's a little bit about who we are and what we've done with you guys. Christopher was kind enough uh, several months ago to say, ask me to join this meeting to share a little bit about the updates that we are going through and also just get some feedback from you all. Um, my understanding is that, you know, you're wondering whether or not uh, we provide enough value to you, which is a very fair question to ask. And uh, so I'm here to listen and answer any questions. And um, maybe I'll start this by just asking, you know, for anybody that wants to share, what has your experience been thus far? So I have uh, really enjoyed having Literati as a, um, I, I like to just think of it as a pool of data to, to go into as we need it, also to point people when people say, I want to do more, I want to provide more than just a cleanup, how can I get involved? I've really enjoyed having Literati as an option there. Um, usually just hand them a flyer with a QR code, say, join our challenge here with some steps to walk through it. Um, we've had it for a couple of years. I think we've had something over 30,000 pieces of, of litter, uh, uh, at least photographed, if not fully audited, through our challenges. So we've been really thankful, especially to uh, uh, No Plastic Please. Uh, they've been working with Pittsburgh Ploggers, and they've done a really great job of keeping those uh, going. We've really, really in, uh, enjoyed having that information. Um, in the past year, we, you know, I think the, one of the last times we had really met with Laterati, we had been hearing a lot of potential updates coming up, but we haven't seen a lot of those come through. I think one of the ones people were most excited about was doing things like um, having access to labeling and tagging photos in a browser instead of in the app while we're on a computer, things like that. And we've seen uh, it looked like a... Um, a reduction in staff over there. So we just haven't had, we haven't seen any of the updates that we heard about a couple of years ago. We were just wondering where the platform is going next, what what we're, what's to be expected, if any of those have been reverse course or if they're still in planning or where we're at there. I know that a few of our member organizations also wanted to know more ways to be more proactive in, in using Literati because I, I tend to be, uh, not as proactive, but instead just kind of share it out as much as I can. And then when I need to dip into it on the back end to, to find stuff, um, which is not necessarily the most proactive approach. And I think uh, our member organizations like uh, Friends of the Riverfront and uh, Allegheny Cleanways uh, wanted some some better ideas on how to use the platform to make sure we're getting the most value out of it. So that's a kind of a broad range of stuff to start with. Um, and then we can go from there. Great. So I just wanted to share my screen. Hopefully you can all see this. This is your dashboard. And it does, Christopher's absolutely right. So over the course of our relationship, uh, 36,000 pieces have been identified and mapped. Um, here is sort of uh, those people who are the top contributors and a month-by-month -month activity calendar. This is back in 2022. 2023 has been a bit slower uh, outside of April, which is typical because that's when you start to get into nicer weather, Earth Month, et cetera, um, things like that. Uh, let me stop sharing for a second. And <laughs> that's funny. I'm behind my screen. So while I'm managing my own computer, um, an update on the staff and where we are. So at the end of 2022, so pretty much a year ago, sorry that I'm not controlling that as well as I would have liked. Hold on, bear with me one second, please.
It's like my own cat jumping around, destroying things. Mm -hmm. um, so at the end of 2022, uh, we had to reduce the staff by almost 90%. So I'm going to open this up and be fully transparent with you. We came off our biggest commercial year ever. Things were looking very, very good. And we had to reduce the staff by about 90%, which you can imagine has a dramatic effect on everything from culture to resource to uh, pipeline building and things like that. Um, I can get into the nuances of why that ha why that occurred if you're interested, but that's what occurred. The other thing that happened was we have two programs. One is called Engage. That's what Christopher just described. That is how you engage all the people in your community. And by the way, a community could be an 11th grade class. It could be a city. It could be all the employees who work for Adidas. And we've served all those different types of partners. That's Engage. The other product that we've always offered is something called Analyze. So whereas Engage is a crowdsourced approach where anybody can identify anything at their will, there's no methodology, there's no protocol, Analyze takes a very different approach. Analyze is a scientific approach to collecting data in a way that follows a very um, uh, streamlined protocol where people are doing the same thing over and over and over so that you can generate a data set that is auditable, has statistical significance, and can truly be used to find insights and analysis around litter. We work with organizations on Analyze like the World Bank or Keep Britain Tidy, which is their largest environmental NGO, or a number of other municipalities. Engage, about getting people engaged. Analyze is really a deeper dive into the data. What we learned is that Engage, where we've worked with a bunch of cities outside of Pittsburgh, was great, but only to a point. And I think you guys have experienced that. It has been limiting. And the reasons are, it's tough to keep people engaged in picking up trash over the long term. You might see a spike around cultural events like World Oceans Day, World Environment Day, Earth Day, or, hey, everybody, it's Clean Up Pittsburgh Day. And you will have some folks who are sort of the early adopters who are always going to be engaged. But in terms of building a truly large, scaling, uh, ever-engaged, never-sustained community, it's tricky. And I've been at this for 11 years. We've tried everything from gamification techniques to extrinsic rewards to relying on just the intrinsic motivation one feels for keeping the community clean. And I'll tell you, it is one of the most difficult challenges I've ever faced. So we've really focused much of our attention on Analyze. And you essentially don't rely on a community. So I will sort of say one last thing and then field any questions you have. And I also want to respect that I only have a limited amount of time during this agenda. So kick me out when you, whatever you need. Um, what we have found is that if you really want to solve the problem, like truly want to eradicate the problem, Yes, behavioral change is critical. Yes, things like getting your community involved is really important because that encourages cleanups and sort of what we call the top-down approach. But without truly scientific data, it's really, really hard. And the reason, and this is where I'll end, is that we believe at the end of the day, policy is what's going to change the game. And with things like extended producer responsibility, if you're not familiar with it, look it up, or I can, I'm sure Christopher can explain it. Now there are new regulations coming that are going to force through regulation compliance producers to create a flow of capital into the system that can be leveraged by the cities. And that area of extended producer responsibility really relies on data, data that can be used in things like litigation. Um, so our focus has really been around Analyze, and we have, Christopher, to your point, built web-based tools for the scientists and researchers to do online tagging which is a lot easier. Um, I'm happy if there's time to show you sort of what we do in the analyzed world. We can do that another time, uh, but I'll, I'll leave you with this. Um, the city of Baltimore just sued the entire tobacco industry, specifically Philip Morris, RJ Reynolds, British American Tobacco, and a retailer. They sued them specifically for the cost of cleaning up cigarette butt litter. It's a city that's very close to Pittsburgh, Smaller, I'm assuming, in population, um, but probably relatively close. The city of Baltimore spends $32.5 million cleaning up. 
litter. Five and a half is just cigarette butt litter. And what they're looking for is data to help create a compelling piece of evidence in court. If I'm a city, I'm looking, I know the budgets are tight and I'm looking for new ways of generating revenue. If you're interested in looking down that route, it's something we might be able to help with. Can we continue with the engage? We can. Do I think it's going to solve the problem? And you're listening to like the founder of the company. I don't. I would tell you to stop using it. I would tell you to try and focus on something that's more data specific. So I've said a lot. I'll stop there. Happy to answer any other questions. Um, and I'll also let Christopher share my email. You can all reach out to me at any point uh, for whatever reason you like. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. There's been a lot of times where we, we have looked at our data coming from the Engage platform, and we always have to kind of put an asterisk next to, next to that, just like in any conversation, hey, this is a crowdsource, which means there is large gaps in areas where people are not using the platform, and then a, an abundance of information from areas that people are using it. So it's not something we can say is consistent throughout the city. We are missing some of our most vulnerable populations usually when we look at this and we have to always use that asterisk. So maybe that is something we, we have to consider going forward is um, if we want to use it for more serious, because we, we've used it a few times to help support legislation and to get grants and things like that. But I think if that is the end goal, it may be less on trying to constantly promote, engage and, and move more towards an analyze side. Um, I'd like to, to I, I know that Myrna especially was one of the, the people on the commission who wanted to uh, learn more and uh, with Allegheny Cleanways, how can our nonprofits use it a little bit better as well? So I am going to call out Myrna since Kelsey's not here, who is another one who, who is looking to, to have some questions answered. So do you have anything to add, Myrna? Don't no, really. I'm sorry. Um Mostly because I think Jeff answered um, a lot of the questions that I had. On, um, and I, I'm intrigued by the data piece of it. I'm really intrigued by how Baltimore has been able to use the data. And I think that seems like that's, that's so cool. And that's exactly what I'd love to be doing with our data, frankly. Um, Christopher I, I, and I Mer yeah. Myrna, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no, I'm done. Go ahead. Christopher, can I take, I promise, no more than 60 seconds and show you all something? Absolutely, please. Laura, you're shaking your head. No, I shouldn't do that. Or You've got time. I don't want you to feel pressed for time. Like, we would love to come out of today really feeling like we have our feet under us, R.E. Literati, because that's something we've been kicking around here for a while. So I don't want you to be concerned about that today. Thank you. Um, and I don't. And I also recognize this is your space and your time. So you try to attack a problem for a decade and you learn a lot of lessons and you learn a lot of them the hard way, right? We've made a ton of mistakes and we've made a ton of pro progress and a lot of impact. But I think one of the mistakes or lessons learned is that um, litter of all things is one of those problems maybe like outside of this group it's one of those things that a lot of people just look at and move on and assume it's somebody else's responsibility i didn't put that there why should i take care of it it'll get swept up it's not my, right it's not it's almost the inverse of the tragic tragedy of the commons if you're familiar with that uh, concept instead of everybody like completing a certain resource this is everybody forgetting about a certain problem and making it so that everybody else worries about it One of the reasons we think the data is so critical, which I recognize is an obvious statement, but let me articulate why. We believe that um, you have to be able to do, if I could leave you with one thought, it's this. You have to be able to monitor change over time. So here's the analogy. If I was walking outside with Christopher 100 years ago, and he looked at me and he was like, it's hot today. And I was like, yeah, it's hotter than it is yesterday. And Christopher said, yeah, but how much hotter? I would have no idea of illustrating how much hotter because the thermometer didn't exist. Then somebody has the brilliant idea to create a thermometer and suddenly you can be like, you know what? It's two degrees hotter today. 
In the world of waste and litter, there is no thermometer. There is no way to measure change over time. If any of you walk outside your communities in Pittsburgh, other than the visual anecdote of, oh, my community looks a little bit cleaner, you really don't know whether things are better or worse than they were a year ago, two years ago, et cetera. The purpose of the platform we've built with Analyze is to try to be that thermometer so that you can determine are things improving over time. Ideally, you are taking measurements as frequently as possible, but you're not just ending there. You're adding other data sets such as weather, cleanup schedules, socioeconomics, topography, locations of storm drains. And the reason that this becomes critical is you can start to measure the return on an investment of any intervention in the system. That is a big phrase, but let me break it down. So let's say your intervention in the system is we want to put 2,000 new trash cans throughout the city of Pittsburgh or we want to create a plastic bag ban, or we want to outfit all the uh, elementary schools with a new educational environmental curriculum. That's an intervention in the system. But in order to determine whether that intervention works or has any level of efficacy, you got to measure something on the before, the during, and the after. That's what we've built at Analyze. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And, um, you know, the, the, uh, the, our engaged data has been brought up. We have recently passed and, and our new bag ban just went into effect two weeks ago or three weeks ago, very, very re recently within the past couple of weeks, uh, bag ban has gone into effect and, and literati has been brought up about a way to measure that efficacy, but, you know, through the engaged platform, we always have to use that asterisk. And, and uh, it, yeah, I, I think, that, um, what you're talking about is exactly what we've kind of struggled with is how could we turn around and use it? Cause I loved having the percentage. If we, out of, of the 30,000 pieces we've got, this percentage is plastic bags, this percentage is cigarettes. Um, but it, it was a, a poor fit to measure time and change um, exactly how you're talking about. So it may be that we need to focus more uh, if, if we are con to continue with literati, focus on analyze, be a lot more strategic in how we use it. And then um, if we did say, okay, we're, we're not worried so much about Engage, we do want to continue with Literati through um, Analyze, we'd still have the option to have a challenge code that we could invite people to use. You know, if they want to get involved, they want to help contribute, we could still use that Clean Pittsburgh Commission challenge code that we keep going year after year. That's correct? That's correct. And and I want to go back to what you said about the asterisk. Like my goal is for you to be able to not have an asterisk. So Mirna, hopefully this will give you maybe like plant a seed. So what I'm showing you here is some of you may be familiar with Esri and ArcGIS dashboard, which is used by cities everywhere. So this is a project that we did with the city of Hayward, California. And just to give you a quick sense of the rigor behind something like this. What you're looking at is the outline of the city. And I'll zoom in just a bit. Each of the red squiggly lines you see are what we call segments. This is, we have researchers who follow the same protocol walking a segment, which is 50 meters up one side of a road and 50 meters back the other side of the road or a sidewalk or a trail or whatever our partner wants us to measure. So you can look and see that it gets very, very specific where they walk. So down here, up and down this road, these roads, et cetera. Then we can say, okay, well, what's the litter data at any of those given locations? And now you start to see, okay, well, some areas have more than others and we break it down. So the color coding here is everything in blue is smoking related. And, and excuse me, take that back. Blue is during the spring, yellow is during the summer, orange is during the fall. So we did a four-phased approach, right? Starting to monitor change over time. And you break it down into categories, smoking, personal hygiene, household products, food, drink, et cetera. Then if I wanted to look at <clears throat> um, not just the litter data, but like getting down to and this is a 100,000 total sample size. You can see down in the right-hand corner, this particular phase, we're just looking, or this particular uh, time, we're just looking at 30,000 pieces. So the next thing I can do is look at um, identifiable litter per meter. So you start to get into, whoops, you start to get into real granularity of how many pieces 
per litter in any given area. And why that's helpful is it allows a city to focus its resources. So in here, it's basically one um, uh, one piece, excuse me, point one pieces every meter. And in any given one of these dots, I can click on it and you can see exactly what it is. Here's a plastic fork. All of that metadata is around it. The geotag, when it was found, what it's made of, in case there's a brand, it's branded. And this level of granularity provides that auditability, provides that evidence, provides that statistical significance that some of our partners are finding helpful. So I'll stop there, um, but hopefully that gives you all a little insight as to um, what we are doing with some others, what we think provides a, a better opportunity for the cities to generate revenue or get to the root of the cause, the root of the problem. Um, uh, and ultimately eradicate it. So happy to answer any questions or uh, Christopher, I'll turn it back to you. Um, one question I have is uh, you mentioned the city of Baltimore using this for, for litigation. And, and um, how have you seen the analyzed platform best used for the nonprofit area? So let me be really clear. Baltimore has not yet started to use mm -hmm. the platform. We are in conversations and I'll tell you exactly who with two parties um, one is the law firm that is heading up the litigation. And two is, uh, I believe her title is the city solicitor, which I think is the title for the sort of the chief uh, legal individual that represents the city. Um, you asked, how have we seen nonprofits utilize, analyze? Mm -hmm. The use case is much the same. It is typically around influencing policy in some cases, it can be to try to influence corporations, specifically around their packaging as well. Um, but there's less teeth, if you will, to try to influence a corporation when it's coming from a smaller nonprofit, a bigger you know, institution or a bigger IGO, uh, like the World Bank has, has a bit more. Um, and with the World Bank, they're using it to influence sorry, not to influence, to inform infrastructure. So we're in the middle of a large project in Tanzania, specifically in the city of Dar es Salaam. And they are utilizing Analyze to identify where are the hotspots because that's where they're going to put inf their resources uh, for infrastructure into that city. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Question. So then if, you know, I... Our nonprofit, for instance, is so small that you know we can't influence anything. But one of the reasons we wanted to partner with Literati um, was because Literati is big enough that you can influence and has, or we were hoping, excuse me, um, we were hoping that Literati had the footprint and the connections world worldwide that um, you would be able to influence. So are you able to speak to any of the... Um, I don't know legislation or changes you've been able to make with the with the um, the results that you've been getting for the past how, how many years have you have you been working at this? Many. Yeah. I've been at it. I've been at it for about ten. Um, yeah. So to be clear, Mirna, we're not the ones who are going to the corporations or going to the policymakers uh, or the regulatory bodies. We have. Um, and, and certainly we've been asked to do things like provide quotes and case studies and, and things like that. But we've really, uh, we really see ourselves and positioned ourselves as a tool, a tool for others to create transparency and accountability. You know your city much better than I do, um, and as do all of our partners. So that's, that's really how we um, treat the tool and, and, and and, and maybe in this case didn't clearly communicate with you all, um, but we're not the ones sort of like trying to adjust the policies ourselves. It's our partners yeah, who are I, using us to do that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I didn't answer, ask the question properly. I, I know, for instance, that like, I guess worldwide, Pope is the number, Pope products, right? Or the number one littered item or something like that. that and that has come... Uh, that those statistics, I assume, have come from um, people participating in things like literati. I'm sure it's come from other um, 
collections. Like we've done a, a waste audit and others have as well. But, um, but that data is being used to put pressure on the big, you know, poke, com poke manufacturer. What's the Coca-Cola company? I guess that's the big over overarching um, name of the company to do better, you know, to have to in include more um, messaging about litter, about not littering, to, to have more de um, compostable items to try to try to change how they're packaging things. And yeah, so it was really my question was less about you literati doing that, but how maybe your data has been used to to make some of those cases, if you have any of that information. Yeah, thanks for the clarification. Um, so I'll give you two examples. Um, one of them happened a long, long time ago. And frankly, at the time, like our platform barely existed, didn't have nearly the capability that it has now, but I think it points to what's possible. San Francisco, cigarette butts, they had created a, what they call an excise tax or a, a tax on all cigarette sales long before we existed. Um, and that tax was, I think, like 20 cents per pack. I have no idea how many people smoke in the city of San Francisco, but you can imagine that creates a huge coffer. So the tobacco industry sued the city saying, we're not responsible for the level and volume of cigarette butt litter that you say we are. So they brought us in and we collected in a statistically significant, rigorous manner, cigarette butt litter data. Actually, it wasn't just for uh, butts. It was the pack, the plastic wrapper that goes around it, all smoking related litter. Vapes at this point didn't exist. We provide that city back, that data back to the city. They used that not only to defend the lawsuit, but it ended up doubling the tax. And I've been told through reports that when you extrapolate that out, it generates about $4 million a year in what's called a litter abatement fee for the city to help clean itself up. That's an example of where the data was instrumental in helping the city generate additional revenue streams. We didn't have any contact with the industry at that point. We were working specifically with the Department of the Environment and the Department of Public Works. That's one example. On the corporate side, and by the way, what I'll tell you, and I've had long conversations with Coke, they don't really, they just don't feel the need to move out of the goodness of their heart um, necessarily. I don't believe they're bad people. I just, it doesn't move the needle for them. Coke, quick tangent, what they're, what they told us they're most interested in is can literati you be used to identify where there's lots of material out on the ground that they can collect so that they can use it in post-consumer recyclable goods so they can meet certain targets, which I don't think they're ever going to meet regardless, but that's what they were hoping to use us for. Not like it was much more of a carrot, less of a stick, as you can imagine. That being said, in Holland, which is, I would say, probably the most advanced country when it comes to any of this conversation. There's a company called um, Pervasco, and they create a product called Antiflu, like anti-flu. It's like a cough drop. So picture that, right? And they're wrapped almost like a Hall's Mentaliptus. So the, there was a nonprofit who sort of orchestrated a community cleanup over a long period of time, six months, a year, something like that. They collected, I think it was like 50,000 photographs of antiflu wrappers that all they took it upon themselves mapped it went to the company i have the video which i will send to christopher it's in dutch so you'll probably have to translate it yourself but essentially the they presented the data to the ceo and said we're finding you or material all over the ground and this particular ceo said all right i'm changing the supply chain we're no longer wrapping them in plastic we're going to wrap them in paper and seal them with wax now, can you still find paper wrapper on the ground? Of course. Is it a lot less better than plastic? Yes, it is. So that's an example. And he did. It took him about a year to make that change, but he did make the change. So it's another example, to your point, where a little bit of pressure was able to generate you know, some meaningful impact and meaningful change. There are some others, but hopefully those give you some seedlings of ideas of where the data can be used to do that. Thanks. Looks like Josh has a Josh or Aaron. Um, the 
the screen that you shared with us before with the, the data, um, is that, do we have access to that for Pittsburgh? I'm sorry if that's what you were showing us. That was not Pittsburgh. That was, so you would have access to that, yes. And that is a um, platform that is used by pretty much every city. So Esri is a very well-known company. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I thought that was part of, I, I had how it would be very cool to overlay with like Myrna's Alley and Cleanway's dump sites and like tree canopy and parks and just like looking at the overlay of, of where the litter is being collected and, and how that, in, you know, impacts health incomes. You know, we have lots of different data sources we could overlay with that would be really interesting to see. So that's all I'm wondering about. Aaron, you were, for me, you're hitting the nail on the head because what it does is it lets you isolate, in my opinion, it lets you isolate the areas to focus your attention on. So in Austin, as an example, we did a project with them last year where their main concern was the watershed and the number of pieces of litter that were heading into the watershed. So what we did was we had an analyzed project. It lasted a month. We um, had that top layer of litter collected, and then we overlaid a map of all of the storm drains. And so what it did was it allowed Austin to understand where which storm drains were collecting the most litter, which allowed them to prioritize where to focus their resources. It sounds stupid and simple, and it is, but it was sort of something they hadn't done before. But you're right, like being able to overlay lots of different data sets um, is really helpful. I'll share one last example when I know I'm talking a lot, so I'll stop. Back to the World Bank. Um, one of the data sets we currently integrate with that work in Tanzania is land use type. So you look at residential versus construction versus commercial versus, you know, even things like military where you have to stay away from. Um, land use type has really been, I never even considered this, but it's been helpful to think, identify areas such as construction zones that when um, the the permits are provided for those who are building for the contractors. They weren't required to have recycling bins or sufficient trash cans on site, right? You would have, at least I would have never thought about that. But when we saw the volume of litter near construction zones, it begged the question, well, why are we seeing so much litter by construction zones? And someone said, well, I have an idea. Maybe it's because they're not required to do X, Y, and Z. And that leads to a potential change. Okay, going forward, if you apply to build X, Y, or Z on a particular lot, you must have sufficient recycling bins, trash cans, et cetera. So some interesting questions that can come from the data and overlaying other sets. One question I had about um, Analyze, I know that you know Engage is the crowdsourced uh, uh, side of this, but for data collection on anal analyze do you see that as mostly uh almost entirely uh um like paid employees using that platform and working it you can't open that up to the public very well without missing some things or creating the same problems as as uh, or engage correct uh somewhat correct so great question so we have both i will mm -hmm. tell you in the case of um Deep Britain. So in the case of the cities, we've done um, projects where it's not, they're not paid by the, they may be paid employees by the city, but they're not paid by the project, if you will, right? There's no uh, money being utilized out of the budget of the project to pay them. So that's, that's an example of where that can happen. Another example is we've partnered like we're doing in Tanzania right now with local environmental groups uh, who are not being paid. We've partnered with local environment groups who do get paid. And certainly there have been times where we've gone and identified, mobilized, trained individuals who, who get paid. I would, that's a long-winded way, Christopher, of saying, I think that the way you do it properly is to pay people. Um, it, it, it raises the level of um, commitment, if you will, to doing it correctly. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, if, if we did want to, because I think what we're seeing here is that um, we'd want more of the data that comes out of the engage side rather, or the analyze side rather than engage, even though we've liked what we've seen with engage, but it is hard to constantly keep that promotion of, of go out and do this for us, go out and do that for us. You know, um, we, we the, the analyzed platform would definitely provide more for us, but then it becomes a question of who's doing that, you know, who's got 
the capacity, is that going to be something we want as a commission to try to work our nonprofits? Do we want to see if city has any uh, capacity to, to handle that? That would take a, a lot of planning, but I, I think it would be worth it if we knew the right use case, if we knew what we wanted our end goal to be out of the analyze uh, side, which I don't yeah. think we currently have. We have a couple things going on like the bag ban, but I don't, I, I think if we could first identify what we're hoping to achieve on the back end, it would probably help us get the resources to actually have people uh, work on the analyze side. Right? So. Yeah, I'll share with you two uh, insights. One is just in terms of number of people. So uh, projects in Baltimore, not Baltimore, sorry, in, as an example, Norfolk, Virginia, Hayward, California, Memphis, Tennessee, about 10 people per city was totally sufficient. 10 trained individuals who that's what they, and it wasn't a full-time job, but that's what they were doing, you know, when they, they were out, um, was more than sufficient to cover the entire geographic scope. So 10 people, you could go down to probably eight or even six if you had people who were truly invested in doing it more and more. But just to give you a sense, like that's how many. On the other side, we just completed a project where we baselined the entire United Kingdom. So all of Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, England. That was a logistical challenge which took about 200 researchers. But it, now Keep Britain Tidy, which is sort of the Keep America Beautiful, if you will, of uh, of England, has a massive data set um, that they are doing a lot of work with around policy. And Myrna, to Mirna's point, like I don't want to say necessarily going after, I don't want to speak for them, but going after the leading producers. Excellent. Do we have any other questions before we move on today? Awesome. So thank you so much for coming uh, today, Jeff. We need to kind of reassess what we want out of Literati and what we want to do going forward, but uh, we'll, we'll be in touch very soon. Thank you for inviting me to join you all. I, I appreciate what we've done in the past and I'm here to answer any questions. Um, and more than anything, I hope you all are able to solve the problem. Uh, regardless if you work with us or, or others. So enjoy the week. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye. Thanks, Jeff. That's a lot of things that we know now. <laughs> All right. Um, why don't um, I will reach out to everybody and we can see if we want to put together a working group on what we'd like to see with Literati going forward so we don't have to record it here. <laughs> but well, uh, I'll ask uh, anybody who wants to see wh whether we want to switch platforms, if we want to continue with Engage for another year and try to do a better job of promotion, which ha has been lacking this year. So I'll send that out and anybody who's interested in joining, please do. Okay, we'll do. Okay, thank you, Chris. Um, uh, in a related but not the same note, our next agenda item is our finance committee update. Thanks, Sarah. You're uh, um, hey, everybody. So, um, we have a lot to not a lot to go over, but a lot of decisions to make, and not surprisingly, at the end of the year, like CPC, and we like to do it. Um, I'll share my screen to show the budget. Um, I've been having a lot of great meetings with, and his name is escaping me right now, Don. Mudrick. Like, yeah. Um, he's been very helpful in explaining um, in more detail how we expend the funds, how that works. Um, and I just probably a month ago had a meeting with him again. The biggest uh, thing that is a issue right now is that originally he had said that we could encumber the $10,000 that we were looking to for the STEPS program. That is not the case. He found out uh, we are unable to do that unless we were going to do the work like in the first month or two um, of next year. So that leaves us with a fair amount of money available in our budget and not a lot of time um, to spend it down. Um, which unfortunately kind of brings us back to a similar situation um, 
moving forward, just in talking to him, I'm going to, uh, assuming I'm going to stay and do treasurer type work for the CPC um, or whoever does, they we're going to start meeting with him quarterly to review um, what expenses has gone out, um, making sure our budgets are matching up, um, just really kind of being a little more transparent and a little more, I don't know, um, up to date with stuff um, and not like the end of the year, but it's been great. Um, it's been wonderful working with him. He's been the most um, available that I've ever had somebody from the city to kind of, ex you know, go through these different um, processes with. So it's really, really greatly appreciated. And I'm sure too, he'd be willing to come, um, you know, to maybe one of these meetings. So mainly right now, um, I did talk to, can you guys see the Google doc I'm assuming? Yes. Okay. I see a thumbs up. Um, I talked to Kelsey. We have two expenses still out there for um, Friends of the Riverfront. She is going to be providing her invoices to me um, by the end of this week, and I'll get those in. So those are good to go. A couple of the things that are outstanding that the one that the CPC needs to figure out is literati for 2024 um do we want to put money into it um, uh, we have five thousand assume that that's what the cost would be chris i don't know if you can lend any if that's still the cost would be for 2024 i i believe it would be that was what we i believe we reached out early in the year and said um you know, just for the, the purposes of the spreadsheet, are we still going to do 5,000 by next year? They had talked about wanting to do a subscription model, which is harder for us to do with a P card. So they said, okay, 5,000 is fine if we want to continue with the way things are now. Um, I don't know what an engage or not the, what the analysis platform, if we did decide to switch to analysis, what the difference would be, but I doubt it would be 5,000. So, so we, that's a decision that we need to make. And then looking at some of the other items, we approved a thousand through Humane Action Pittsburgh for signage. Um, I have not received an invoice from them. So if, if Chris, if you have the contact, mainly the, the other big pressure is we need to get all this stuff in by early December. You know, the city kind of shuts down um, second week or so in December, and then there's not going to be any money um, moving in or out. So just making sure that um, and I'm good to kind of, you know, put myself in a place to kind of get this stuff out, whatever I have, um, out by the end of this month. So if you're able to get me a contact there, I can get that sent in and that won't be a problem. I just wanted to double check on the Garbage Olympics. Um, the $2,000 that we approved that I think was going through for purchasing of supplies, has that been expended down Chris to your understanding I don't have any information on that um yeah that was done through the warehouse so that should okay. have already been paid and I believe PRC is still waiting on a thousand dollars for covering the garbage Olympics costs um I did send in the documentation and it should be being paid by pcard through Afton so I might need to nudge her and see if she's paid us, um, which leaves us at, at this point, about $15,000 being spent down. We never went any further with the reusable bag conversation. I think we were looking for more information. I don't think we ever got any more details on the types of bags or, um, or I don't remember seeing that. So that really never moved anywhere. So kind of our main things that we need to look at and figure out I think today in particular would be literati. Um, are we looking to provide any dollars for reusable bags or do we still need more money? And then even with that, we still probably have, you know, geez, at this point, let me put in a thousand. And if we do five for literati, we'd still have, you know, $8,000 left to spend. And so what are we going to use that money on? So first I would just suggest that we look at the expenditures that we are listed here that we have not voted on. 
and I, I'm I don't I'm assuming do we have uh, enough people to approve an expenditure? Okay. So the first would be literati. I don't know if there's any discussion um, amongst the group about you know thoughts for moving forward for next year. And I'll stop sharing. Um. Yeah, for literati, I think everybody's interested in the in, in uh, analyzed platform. Uh, that would take a significant amount of planning to say who's doing what, what's the end goal, what are we we capturing, what what do we want. Um, I, I don't think we'd have the ability to really make that decision about analyze today. We could make a decision whether we want to keep and engage for another year. Um, like I said, it's it's something that I, I'm real bad at having subscriptions go on after I stop using a service. But um, a promotion, we were very, very heavy on promotion when we first started. And as we um, lacked some capacity to, to keep that up as much, surely uh, it almost matched almost exactly how uh, usage of it went down with our less and less promotion. So if we feel that there is some desire to keep that for another year while we talk about engage if we if we choose or in analyze uh, keep messing up which ones i'm talking about so if we want to we can go ahead and say we're not going to continue uh engage for another year and we, we're going to start looking at and uh, analyze um i'm fine with that i'm also the king of letting a subscription go on so uh, I'm probably a bad person to make that call, but I'd love to hear more um, from everybody and what they'd like to see done with that, especially considering um, we're at the end of the year, a couple of our projects have not come through. And so we would definitely have money to spend right now. So I have a couple follow-ups to that. So when does this current subscription end? Is it an, on an annual calendar? It is. So I, I believe it's, I think it's November, so I think we it be this month is when it would end if we chose not to go forward. And, okay, and what's the cost again? Five thousand a year. And we have how much left unexpended? Fifteen. Yeah, if we would without uh, that, we have about just under. Think of my math: thirteen thousand available. If I took out from all the other things that we approved, that would be also if we approved the reusable bags at a thousand. Okay. So, so we have the funds for sure. Sure, sure. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I'm just curious because I just feel like there's not a lot of people on this call today. I wouldn't feel comfortable making making like a motion to say, yeah, let's go for another year of literati. Is it possible, like? If we lapsed for a couple of like, what if we had, because you were going to send out a follow-up email to have kind of discussion around literati anyways, what if that meeting was the meeting that made the recommendation to the larger CPC about what to do? And then my only question is like, will we be able to deactivate our account and then reactivate it and keep all the data? I'm assuming yes, if we lapsed for a couple of weeks. Yeah, I, I believe so. I think really... The, the subscription that we have through Literati in our paid account, if we stopped paying today, we'd still have all that information, really. This is a lot to do with supporting the app, and it's a few extra features on the dashboard side. But even if we stop paying for Literati today, we'd still have a join code that people could use, and we'd still get that kind of data. Um, it, there just be less options, which really the options in the, the dashboard we have not used to its fullest potential to start with. So um, things will move forward pretty uh, normally while we um, lapse and try to figure out what we want to do next. Because even if we say we don't want to pay for literati a single cent for the forever, we can still tell people. Go on Literati, you use our join code, they can still do that, we can still collect the data. It's just what we can do with it afterwards is limited, but not by much. So I wonder if it would make sense to utilize, to allow ourselves to lapse, have that meeting that you mm -hmm. were talking about and kind of outline like in columns, like this is what we have with the non-paid versions is what we, because for me, I feel like, and I will be the first to admit that 
like the Parks Conservancy and Aaron Tobin as an individual on this committee could have done more, should have done more to promote literati, right? So for me, if, it feels to me like if we as individuals and organizations on the Clean Pittsburgh Commission have more, have the capacity to push it, like we sh it would be worth paying for the more features, right? But if we're not going to, and we're going to not take the time to promote it and really push it out and utilize it to the best of the, you know our abilities, then I don't know that it's worth the four thousand or whatever. So I guess what I'm saying is I I would recommend we have that meeting and then that committee that of people recommend the larger CPC what to do. But that's just those are just my thoughts. No, that makes total sense. I, I would agree with that as well. If we don't have to make a decision on that, we can we can have our subcommittee meeting. Everybody who's interested in the, the issue can take part, and then we would send out a vote over email to, to see if we could still do that. I think we have a date set in the calendar here of when in December we need these. Uh, I think it's December 12th would be really the last time we can make any changes or anything. That is our cutoff date for, for decisions. So um, we still have time in November to, to have that meeting as soon as possible. So we'll try to do that within the next two weeks. Yeah, and let's plan to have our decisions made if possible by the, like the 6th. Because if we need to get invoices from people, I just I don't want it to go up to the very last day and then it's where it's going to be the same thing where we're going to be like, oh, we didn't get to it in 2023. So trying to get as much, I'm all for having a more, a bigger conversation um, around it and really hearing to like entities like Clean Ways and folks that are maybe utilizing it more. Has it been valuable to you? Um, has it not? Is Would there be somewhere else that, yeah, the money could be more valuable. And I also don't want to just spend the money to spend the money. Like, you're like, we have $5,000, so we should just spend it. Like, that's, you know, not necessarily, I think, how any of us want to do, so... And uh, um, to the, so we'll, we'll wait on literati. To the question of bag usage, um, I think we had tasked Tobias, our bag band personnel, I forget what his actual title is, on telling us what he'd like to see on, on bags. And since we are facing a, um, you know, a, a cliff here, uh, would people be all right with increasing the amount that we would spend towards bags over a thousand to maybe two thousand? That would probably give him a few more options as well, because I know many of these places have minimums in order to get what you want. I think that's something we saw with the bags we purchased for uh, the Garbage Olympics is the ones we really liked. We had to purchase way more than we could really uh, afford in order to get those. So. I, I think that might give us a little more leeway. Would would everyone be comfortable with at least raising the amount we're going to spend on bags and then have Tobias report out to us what he'd like to buy with that? Definitely. Are you, Chris, able to follow up to... Absolutely. I don't know what the amount that the CPC we would like to look at to provide, um, or if he has hey, I want to get 200 of these, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be 35 or okay. whatever. Um, yeah, I'll have him um, do that by next week. Send something out to the entire commission. Here's what, he, in his opinion, would be the best ones for the city to be providing to people, and here's the cost. Um, we, I, I, I think we had had that conversation with him before. I just don't know where we ended up. Ami, do you, do you remember anything more than that? No, no, I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'll, well, I'll, you know, we can, we can both, we can, we can conquer together. We'll figure it out. Okay. So well, that'll be another um, email um, vote that we'll share. And we may consolidate both of those. We'll try to have these meetings as soon as possible over the next couple of weeks and then have these remaining ones sent out over kind of a main email. So you're not getting peppered with, Vote for this, vote for this, vote for this. How's that sound? Um, the last thing that uh, I would ask or suggest is in the past, and this is a little, I won't make a motion of it because uh, I work for PRC, but in the past, uh, the CPC last year provided um, to PRC a couple thousands of dollars to uh, offset the cost of the e-waste and 
uh, drop off that PRC uh, runs for the city. So it was, I think, a ten dollar or so per person discount through the CPC. And the one thing we could do in talking with Don is that if we're going to spend it, so if we picked a number and said, we're going to, CPC is going to give up to $3,000 worth of um, like subsidies um, at $10 a person. If that ran into 2024 early, that's okay. If we didn't spend them all down just due to the number of people who would be coming through, you know, end of November and December. Um, that's one thought for money. Also, I mean, PRC does not benefit from it. It's just obviously going directly, you know, kind of goes to eLoop to pay for the cost. But um, just a thought of, you know, I think it seemed to be, and Josh could probably speak more of this, but it was, was well, well received by residents who were very happy to have that, you know, option. And, you know, and maybe in future years, if it's something we want to focus on, we can even be more strategic about where we offer these discounts, what populations, but for at this time, maybe doing something that's a little more broad, but yeah, go ahead, Josh. Yeah, no, I would just agree that it was a huge, um, a huge benefit and people loved it. And it was a nice way to get them um, smiling and excited about the work that we do. Um, oftentimes it was folks coming in for the first time anyway. Um, so it was a great first impression. And, and I've been on the ground when folks come back and forth mentioned that and that that was the thought from back again. Yeah, I love that idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last time we did that, that was one of my favorite expenditures we did. You could just, it was just directly benefit people without having to go through like some sort of awful grant process, right? Like we are essentially just saving people money who are there to do the right thing and everyone enjoyed it. So um, I would absolutely love to thank you for bringing that up. It totally slipped my mind. That's a great way to, to spend some of this money that directly goes to benefiting Pittsburghers and not, it's not our nonprofits. It doesn't feel like we're taking money for ourselves where this is really something that will go directly to residents who are already there doing the right thing. I love it. Um, so, um, what, how, how much did we spend on that last year? I had that it was um, $2,400 last year. And would so, we be able to spend that on one of our upcoming HHW days? Is that what we did last time? It was HHW? And I believe, I don't know if it was both, depending on the time of the year, Josh. I think it Different points. It was different programs. I think, but I think it rose around this time last year that it was the e waste. Um, but but it could be used at both, and we do have um, an HHW collection coming up this Saturday. Because it wouldn't be that hard of a lift to go ahead and say we're going to do that for the upcoming HHW one, right? That's that's actually a fairly simple transaction compared to a lot of stuff we try to do. So I think we could easily move on that if we wanted to make a decision on it today we double it and do it for each yeah josh how many people are registered do you know for the hhw event this weekend uh, we have 181 folks registered which will okay. be officially our highest turnout for any one uh, collection event at the city um and i'm sure each and every one of them would would love a discount possibly mm -hmm. So that would be, you know, $1,800 right there uh, if we gave everybody to, I mean, that's just what we did last year. We don't have to stick with that number, but. And I would just to add perspective that um, the average cost per participant is around $60 at these events. That's a $10 off the price. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good chunk of money. That's not coming out of their pocket. Yeah. So I'm going to. I'm going to abstain from voting on this because I'm coming on Saturday. <laughs> I have an appointment. <laughs> wow. of all that paint that my neighbor may or may not have been dumping down the uh, storm drain is in my garage right now. That's right. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Are we I, doing... I have a very biased vote in favor of providing this discount to the public. Don't you have to abstain? No. Well... I have a very biased um, vote in favor of it as well, because then, you know, it makes our job easier. But, um, and I probably will be using it at some point. But m m more to the point, um, are we giving 
I'm sorry, I don't know this. My mind is not, yeah, not all with it. But um, are we giving a regular discount for folks that show up just in general? Like how, we, we vote on that, right? There's a, is part of our budget going toward um, discounting e-waste or HHW when right, folks drop off on is it Tuesdays or Thursdays? Yeah, and I think uh, I think what Chris had proposed was or somebody at the Grabs was both programs actually. Um, so it would right. be for the folks that come in on Tuesdays or Thursdays, um, we would yeah. wake them up for what it is for what the total cost is, and let's say it's twenty two dollars and fifty seven cents. We would say this is the total cost, and thanks to a subsidy provided by the Pittsburgh Commission, it's now twelve dollars yeah. and whatever cents. And similar for this Saturday. As well. yeah. and the total is now sixty-two dollars and seventy-five cents, but now it's fifty-two and seventy-five. That kind of stuff, and that would just be money that they don't spend that day. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would vote for using up the rest of our money toward that. Honestly, if we have it, that that's what it should be going toward. Especially with the HHW, where you're talking about the average of sixty, I'd be even comfortable making it a little bit more than than ten each, maybe fifteen to twenty, and then with the e-waste generally being something around 20 you were saying maybe ten dollars going off on that one just you know we, we only have so many left until the end of the year and i think we'd have the money for for doing both yeah and or, you know would it be okay for it to be used after the new year if we my, allocate it now my understanding or from what i heard from don was that if it's used like very soon in the new year. So if we give a total, we, you know, if we say X number of dollars is going to be used for the HHW event, and then the rest will be used up, you know, by the weekly e-waste. Um, if we didn't spend, if it wasn't all used up on December 31st, we could continue to, because we would get that money before the end of the year. So PRC would it would kind of be like we'd be just ticking down out of that pot of money. Um, that was from our last conversation. Um, that's what he said. I don't know though that I don't know when our first HHW event of the new year is. That's not until March or later. That might be too far or something like that. The first one is in March. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry, just to throw out here. Um, what I was kind of asking in my earlier question, and I did not articulate it well, was um, do we have a policy? Like what I'm going to suggest right now is that we just always have money set aside in our budget to subsidize the e-waste. I think that should just be a given in our in our budget. And um, you know, now and forever more. Amen. <laughs> That's that's an excellent idea. We haven't specifically set aside beforehand. Usually, it's like, oh, we, yeah, this would be a good way to use this. And um, you know, I, I think we've only had money for like two, three years now, so we're we're still learning. Um, but I, I'd love that idea, um, especially since it is such a great value. It's such an easy lift. Um, why don't we go ahead today and vote on what we want to spend for the remaining? Um, HHW and e-waste um, collections, and then we can talk about strategy to constantly support that in, in the future years. Um, what, so if we, with um, the HHW coming up this weekend, that one's a, um, usually a larger dollar amount per person. So do, are we thinking stick with 10 or do a little bit higher for that one event? And then we can talk about what we want to do with e-waste. So with you, so we, we have a, about 180 people expected to show up this weekend. $10 each would be only 1,800. Um, what about 15? 15 would be 2,700 and um, 20 would be 3,600. Any strong feelings from anybody about that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's <laughs> Pittsburgh money. It's Pittsburgh. Um, I I think we should 
give it to people. You know, like I think it should make it easy for people to do the right thing. Like I, I just think is sure there will be people from outside of the city coming in. Is that is that correct? I mean, we can assume there would be, right? We're not, are open to not eliminating. I don't think that matters personally, but, you know, just to make sure that that's not an issue. All right. So we'll be we with, with $20 per person for, for this weekend's uh, HHW collection. Yeah. Happy holidays. <laughs> All right. Uh, motion to approve for that. I'll approve. We have a second. A second. A second, Myrna. Excellent. All opposed? Or approved? I always forget the was right way to do this. Approved. I know we have to have a couple of questions. The PRC folks will abstain from the vote. Josh yeah. and Sarah will abstain. See? Yeah, Aaron. <laughs> Honestly, I, I wonder if we have enough um to vote yeah. on this i think i have to abstain as well <laughs> because you're sitting okay. on the couch <laughs> i don't think you have to abstain because you're sitting on the couch but <laughs> it's benefiting my husband's organization it isn't it's only benefiting city residents yeah they're getting right. paid right. either right. way it does not impact us that's, at all. that's a good point it really is okay. benefiting vote. anyone's organization okay all right any any opposed Excellent. Happy holidays. Six yeses here. and three registered abstentions. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Right, and um, so e waste then, or, or do do we need to finalize anything there, Sarah? No, no. I'm just writing in the budget thirty six, and I'll work with Don to get Donald to get uh, less paid. Now, e-waste, obviously, we don't have a nice, clear number um, of what we're going to have over the next few weeks or, or a couple of months. But um, based on what we had done last winter with e-waste, Josh, what do you think would be a reasonable guess of how many people would come in that we could give a $10 off on? Um, you know, we usually get it. I would say around 200 people a month on average between the slow months and the busy months. And we did $10 last year. Um, but, you know, if we're looking to, to increase that a little more capacity there, 15 or 20 would also be great. But if not, nobody's going to be unhappy with 10. And at this time, if we were to approve all of the other expenses that might be put before the commission. So that would be 5,000 for literati. I put in 2,500, I can even say 3,000 for the bags. That was the other thing. With the 3,600 we just approved, that would bring us to $27,325 remain, or total. And then, so it would be a little under 3,000. I say we just put it toward the, the remaining toward the e-waste. I don't know what that amount is, but this is wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> be done with the budget, be done with all of it. It's going to the good thing. Like it's, it's what we want to use it for. I mean, I think it's all good stuff. So, so I think with that amount of uh, $15 per person is our probably best bet. Is that correct, Sarah? Yeah. I mean, Josh, did, what did you say usually? I mean, December is probably possibly a slower month. Um, because I know, you know, there is no activity, but um, per week, what is it per week? Like 80 max? No, I think I think we pop off for, uh, yeah, anywhere between 80 and 100. Um, and then, as you were saying, in December, sometimes things do lighten up, as, especially as we get close to the numbers. But then for the first of the year, we've seen uptick because folks are changing out all the brand new things that they just bought. I got the 95 inch TV, so I got to get the 92 inch TV, that kind of stuff. Um, so we do see them mm -hmm. Dep weather dependent. So I so think if you oh, go ahead, Chris. I was going to say, like, when we were talking about how we can encumber to use at the very beginning of the month, that might be where we really see that that money getting used. Yeah. We don't have to have a, you know, December 31st 
cutoff, if anything, it should be. That's when we're really going to be going through that that money. And you do see an uptick then. So would the amount left cover that new year uptick, do you think? Yeah, I, I think so. And, and in addition to the normal people shopping, um, also that's usually when the city's um, annual outreach tends to go out and, and raises awareness and participation in the program as well. Too. So I think the combination of those factors could definitely utilize those funds. Excellent. I, I would like to do some, so just a little bit of promotion of uh, around the holidays when people are opening up their new TVs that we can say, you know, there's ten dollars off, and um, uh, to to bring your old TV down to to three thousand one. I think that would drive it even more. And if for whatever reason we do go beyond the amount that we have set aside that we had left, um, probably wouldn't be too hard of a lift to then turn around and vote January to yeah. uh, fill in the gap with our, our new 2024 budget. So I, I don't think we should have to worry about running out there. We, we would just supplement it with 2024 as because uh, that's when we will probably see the uptick. Um, so I'm, I'm comfortable with with promising making making that that promotion, hey, ten dollars off. And if we go above that twenty seven thousand, we can continue it and not have to worry about having lied to people. <laughs> Excellent. So we can vote on using that remaining 2700 uh, for e-waste. And then um, if we spend more than that, that'll come out of 2024. Um, motion to approve. Make the motion. Uh, second it. I'll second. Uh, all in favor, aye. Do a little hand, say something. Any opposed? I'll Great job. Again, too, but yay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. That's awesome. Thanks, guys. So now the last few things for the budget is um, Humane Action Pittsburgh, getting that so we can get their invoice getting the details on the bags. Um, and so we can make a vote on that and then a final vote on literati and then we should be good. Thanks, that's all I got. Sorry, I'm muted. I still do that after all this time. Uh, okay, well, that was a lot of things we took care of. Um, and that's really great because they need to be done in a time sensitive manner. So we're going to go to the lightning round for our member organization updates. And if Alex has to kick us out of the Internet, then I guess we get kicked out of the Internet. And don't forget to send your member organization updates to Chris for the news litter. So go for it. Get in there, people. Tell us what's up. Hey, I'll start off. Um this is my last CPC meeting. I will uh, be finishing up with Allegheny Cleanways at the end of the year. So thank you all. It's been great. I love working with you. And um, then we also are hiring an executive director, obviously. And we're also hiring a water program coordinator, water-based cleanup coordinator. So. Um, I think those are our two big ones. Ron, I miss you, Marina. Yeah. We've been so so huge on the commission, and I can't imagine anybody stepping into your shoes and what you've done, both for Allegheny Cleanways and the commission. So um, we really wish you a lot, and, and thank you for everything you've done. Congrats on retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can't afford to retire, but retirement-ish. Yeah. Retirement adjacent. Thanks. Um, uh, if there's, there's, there's still time for more member organizations if we want, but uh, I did want to say that uh, Giselle has agreed to help uh, take over some of our social media 
responsibilities. So she'll be using our Facebook more often, sharing out your, your organization's uh, things, and we'll be helping out with the newsletter. So you'll see the solicitation email come from her. This time we'll work on it together uh, for a bit, and then she'll take it on uh, uh, fully after a while. So Giselle's going to be uh, taking that, which I just said. But yes, thank you, Giselle, too. Can, uh, I can go on and provide uh, some updates for PRC as well. Um, as we were just discussing, we've got an upcoming household hazardous waste collection on Saturday outside of the Environmental Services Building at 3001 Brayer Road Street. Uh, we're expecting a sold out crowd, so it's going to be awesome. Um, and then we are continuing our weekday e-waste collections through the rest of the year, moving into next year as well, obviously with the holidays off. Um, and then speaking of adjusting, sometimes we have adjusted our operating hours for the remainder of the year with um, the oncoming um, change in the clocks, just because it's darker and we wouldn't want to put anybody at risk of any balls or anything if they're coming out to environmental services when it's dark. So we are um, wrapping up the collections a little earlier in the days. Um, and those times are completely reflected on our registration pages. So when members of the public reach out, they'll it won't seem any different for them. But I just wanted to update everybody on that. Um, and then as we also discussed, we're already planning for our collections moving into 2024. We've already worked to uh, are working with our partners at the city to establish the household hazardous waste collections for 2024, as well as identifying early um, city council districts for our neighborhood e-waste collections. Um, and then as we're looking at the end of the year, I wanted to provide some quick um, wrap ups of our work in 2023. We had over a thousand residents come out for HHW collections this year with the city, and we've collected over 37,000 pounds of hazardous waste. We've had over 2,500 residents come out for our e-waste collections and collected over 100,000 pounds of e-waste between our weekday collections and our weekend collections in the various neighborhoods that we've gone out to. Um, so it's been an awesome year, a full calendar year of work with the city and with the residents, and uh, we're looking forward to another one next year. Thank you, Josh. Okay. Anybody else? Last Did minute. Sorry. Oh. Uh, well, yes. Thank you, Josh and PRC, for all the help and Larson, and you know, um, collecting all those materials. Great. Um, the city of Pittsburgh is another doing another year of collecting trees after the uh, holiday. So um, we're hoping to. I just you know that's a. I just reminded myself of that we have to get all this stuff pulled together, but um, flyers will be going out and imagery to share about um, uh, what people can do with their trees, how they should you know prepare them and where they can take them. So that should be coming out um, hopefully sooner rather than later. But, you know, if you have a tree, you know, you can take it to get it mulched in 12, approximately 12 locations in the city. So we'll be sharing that soon. Thanks, Ami. Yay, holiday. Anybody, anybody, anybody? We're doing so good. Send all your stuff to Chris. Watch your email. We have so many emails for you. I think that I will move to adjourn this meeting if no one else has anything happening right now. Seconded. <laughs>